What's going on guys? This is Matt and up for review today is the Cooler Master Master Keys S PBT. This is a board that I think provides a lot of enthusiast features at a pretty reasonable price. So what is this thing? Well the Master Keys S is a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard with a very minimalistic design that sells for $79. So no number pad but Cooler Master does have a full size version for $20 more. Its two biggest selling points in my opinion are the inclusion of genuine Cherry MX switches and its use of thick high quality PBT keycaps, both will usually cost a bit more than what the Master Keys S is selling for. But before I get into why those two things matter, let's take a quick physical tour of the device. Opening up the box, we find the keyboard itself wrapped in a soft plastic wrap, and with it we find a braided detachable USB cable, a user manual, some replacement keycaps, and a key puller. The keyboard itself has a plastic build with soft touch plastic on top and a harder plastic on the bottom. Even though it does have an outer plastic build, it feels sturdy and well built and I personally prefer a material like soft touch plastic over metal as in my opinion it feels nicer to touch and attracts less fingerprints. Also on the top we find a few LED indicator lights and all of the high quality thick PBT keycaps that are more durable and provide a better typing experience over the typical ABS keycaps you'll find on the majority of keyboards. Also, the only place the Cooler Master logo is visible is on the two Windows keys, which is nice as there isn't any in-your-face branding, and if you want to go completely branding free, you can remove and replace those keycaps, creating an even more sleek design. On the bottom, we find four stationary rubber feet, two sturdy flip-out rubber feet to elevate the keyboard, and a USB port for the braided cable, along with routing channels to route the cable once it's plugged in. The cable itself feels nice, and the fact it's detachable is either a plus or minus depending on who you are. I prefer a detachable cable, but a non-detachable cable will have a lower likelihood of breaking after extended use. Pulling a few of the PBT keycaps, we reveal the mechanical switch underneath. My board is Cherry MX screen switches, which provide a tactile bump and an audible click with more force required than MX Blues. Because of the increased actuation force, these switches have a pretty similar feel to buckling spring switches. Though the switches in this particular board are MX screens, you can also get this board in a variety of other switch types, including brown, blue, silver, and red. So why is it so important that these are Cherry MX switches? Well, Cherry MX switches are the industry standard in terms of mechanical switches, and you never really see them on any budget mechanical keyboards. With the biggest difference between these and most of the clones like Kale, Otomo, etc. is the consistency between switches as Cherry has a much higher quality standard than the clones, meaning each switch is going to feel exactly uniform and the same. Overall, typing on this board is a really nice experience. The PBT keycaps, consistent cherry switches, and the solid rubber feet that keep it from sliding around all come together to create one of the better typing experiences I've ever had. And for those of you wondering, this is what it sounds like. Cooler Masters created a board that rises above some of the common downsides of budget keyboards including having the larger keys nicely supported to reduce wobble. Though this keyboard doesn't have backlighting, there are Master Key Pro boards that do and the lack of backlighting means Cooler Master was able to provide this keyboard at a lower cost. The board is providing a lot of features a keyboard enthusiast wants while not going too overboard and allowing it to stay reasonably priced. Overall, for $80, I think Cooler Master is providing a good value for the money, but it's really up to you to decide whether this board is worth it for you personally. I think it's a typer's dream and I highly recommend it, but if you're wanting a lot more features or don't have $80 to spend on a keyboard, you may want to look elsewhere. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt. Signing out.